What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, PTK Bland, back in the building, dropping another video. And as it stands right now, it is Monday morning, and I'm bringing you guys another weekly video. Today has already been an amazing week. But once again, before we dive into anything that we're going to actually talk about today on the video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell right next to that, so that way you're aware of when I post new videos. Please check out the Shop Podcast every Saturday, 6 p.m. Arizona time. Appreciate the guys, you guys love and support on the channel recently. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. Now, let's dive right into this information because I don't want to waste no time talking about this. So, this morning, as I was doing my poll of the week, Xbox dropped some major, major news. Now, let me frame this properly because the last probably six to eight months, ever since we've known about the next Xbox, everybody's been talking about specs, specs, hardware. How are these two consoles, the Xbox uh, Series X and the PS5, going to compare? And the comparisons, as time gone by, and as we've gotten closer to E3, have gotten more and more critical. We've got leaked documents. Everybody's been all over the place. So finally, as of today, Xbox officially announced their specs for the Xbox Series X. And oh me, oh my. And I don't even talk like that. Oh my goodness. I'm going to go down the list. Now, you guys know... I am not the most technically inclined person, but I do understand what these specs mean for the console. Now, I'll highlight something else about their decision to release this information today, but I just want to go over a couple quick things that they put out in the tweet. So, we know that the Series X is going to be 12 teraflops, which is amazing. Custom RDNA 2, Zen 2 processor, both custom, variable, variable rate shading, hardware accelerated, direct X ray tracing. Very, very, very cool shit. There's a couple other features that I want to talk about as well that I think are going to be even more important that, that directly relates to me as a gamer um, outside of the, the, the specs I just went over. So there's two things specifically uh, that I want to talk about. One being Crick Resume. Crick Resume is this dope-ass feature that we've kind of gotten to a very, very little extent. When you first got the OG Xbox One, essentially it had the snap feature where you were able to suspend the game you were playing go do something else and then come back and finish playing that game what quick resume essentially does is it takes that feature and it blows it up essentially now with every game every app you can go in and out and bounce around and pick it pick up where you left off out in multiple apps which is amazing because think about it i mean we have all of us are walking around with cell phones that can do 10 different things so it just makes sense from a functional standpoint that that would be something that they added that as well as something else uh, that was very 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 huge is going to be smart delivery and this is something that's a little bit more technical but essentially what this is saying is that no more hd remasters and hd remax okay when you buy one game you don't you're no longer need to buy it again once you move on and upgrade your system so say for instance right now you're on the xbox one you don't have plans on buying the series x right away it may take you a couple years to do so say you buy a game like mad you know and it has some cool features or you get better obviously you're going to get better a better looking game on the new systems long no longer now do you need to buy like an hd version of a game or a remastered version of a game to get those additional specs it's now going to be across the board so as soon as you put that game in a system the system's going to know hey this is an older game let me download these new assets and allow you to play the upgraded version which is a game changer in my opinion and shout out to CD Projekt Red because they put out a tweet earlier saying that that's an amazing feature and they're 100% behind the feature. And they're, they announced as well that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to support that feature where you don't need to buy a different version of Cyberpunk if you're on an older piece of hardware. You'll be able to carry over and play the same exact version everybody else is playing with the new assets once you do decide to upgrade. You don't need to buy a new copy or do anything like that, which is extremely, extremely consumer friendly. So I greatly appreciate that. And those are two specific things that I wanted to bring up outside of the other specs. I know we're going to have 50,000 tech channels breaking that down more specifically. So you guys can go find that information if you want, because I don't necessarily do that here. Now, I want to talk about what this means for Xbox. And we've been talking about this the last probably three or four different podcasts. Matter of fact, the very last podcast we did, so go check it out. By the way, it's in the archives. It'll be in a link on, on the video somewhere. So the very last podcast we talked about. Now, what does this mean for Xbox? To me, this continues Xbox's bold strategy. This, this shows me that Xbox knows where they're going, has an identity, 
knows what they're doing. They have a very, very, very clear plan. They have a very clear roadmap and they are extremely confident. This was an extremely confident thing to do right now. They could have waited and held off and give us that information at E3 like they did with the Scorpio. They did not. They put all that shit out right now. So one or two things this one or two things this is telling me. One, obviously, this is extremely confident. Two, are we going to get an E3 that's going to be just dedicated to games? Because if you're getting this information out now, we know pretty much everything about the console outside of the price. That is literally the only thing left about the Series X that we do not know as yet. Now I'm not assuming I'm not I'm assuming we're not gonna get that until E3, but that's literally the only thing left. Now I don't know how much time they're going to take at E3 to talk about the Series X, but getting all this information out the way now means that that's that's less time at E3. They really have to talk about these small details. Now I'm excited. As a gamer, you should be excited. You guys know I'm an Xbox guy, but as a gamer in general, you should be excited what this says about Xbox. Who knows what's coming down the line for Sony and the PlayStation 5. So we're definitely going to wait and see. But I, I wanted to get this video out while the information was fresh and new. Once again, I will leave an article down in the description. Um, Xbox put up a bunch of tweets today. I'll leave a couple articles down there. That way you guys can go check and kind of thumb through the information on your own. And figure out you know what you like and what you don't. But other than that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Guys, once again, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you guys so much. Peace out. Have a rest. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you guys later.